Curta Trades here, and we're gonna do a quick update here for the Triple X19, which is the Ecotech swap into a Fiat X19. I'm gonna show you some of the updates that my father's been working on lately and what's new since the last time you saw it. Because if you have any questions, post them in the comments so I can answer them for you. What? I had some people asking about the front suspension or the, the suspension setup. Uh, in the front? Either, both really, just like well, they're both, the they're, design. They're both. Um, this is essentially the same as what we ran on our Pro Trans Am cars, okay? These are Trans Am lower arms and Trans Am upper arms with coilovers. And um, so it's basically, um, that was the race suspension that was on a 2,800 pound, 750 horsepower race car, all right? Front front engined race car. Yeah. So this has no weight compared to the, right. the, the strength of those control arms. The spindles are fabricated uh, chrome molly, just like the ones we used to fabricate for uh, for the Trans Am cars, but it has a different spin. It has a different uh, hub to it. Yeah, it has an aluminum different hub size on, yeah. on it on this, because it's a smaller wheel and tire on this. No, that those are actually way overkill. Is that pretty similar in the back too? Then the back arms are the same as the are, are similar to the versus the front suspension on a Trans Am car. Okay. Yeah, they look pretty similar yeah, to the front. Yeah, they're basically all chromoly, all control arms that are, are fabricated. They're all chromoly steel. And the gauges and the Heim sizes and strengths are the same as what we used in all our Trans Am cars. And I built, you know, yeah. dozens of A them. A lot of them? Yeah, dozens of them. So the suspension is quite strong. Did you have the uh, brakes on there last time? No, I, I don't think so. The brakes are on both ends. Now. Yeah, they look good. Yeah. The Brembo's in the back are um, what comes on a production uh, high output uh, cobalt. Oh, really? Yeah, they, that's why I bought them because they bolt right to those spindles. Hmm. Is that the the lowest point? The lowest point is this is the bottom of the car. Okay, so this is the bottom of the car. The underneath this, you know how some of the cars will have a like an arrow bump. On the bottom of the car, yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to make one out of, out of uh, that fits to this. Uh, that's like a little bit of an arrow bump in front of the tire, because when the tire, when you, if you put an arrow bump in front of the tire, the air will separate around the tire. Otherwise, the air packs up in front of the tire and causes a lot more drag. Okay, mm. so arrow bumps in front of the tires just kind of diffuse the air a little bit. It diffuses the air better and, and uh, it makes it way more streamlined. Because the bottom of this car is super. Super clean. It's pretty flat, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's just the, the carbon yeah. floor, right? Yeah, it's exactly right here. It's about six and a quarter inches wider than stock. On, on each side, yeah. On each side, yeah. It's almost a square. <laughs> it's a wheelbase to track with is about the same as, um. Uh, it's about the same as, uh, um, like a launch of Stratos, like a Stratos. Yeah, those are pretty square too. Yeah, though. those are pretty square. See, the bottom of the car is flat right to here, and then the the rocker panel will come from here out to this surface, however distance I, yeah. whatever oh, distance I see. I'm from. Yeah, yeah. And this gives you your attach point. You that's, can see th this is the chrome molly tubing, and that's the existing Fiat where it was welded together, where the body is set right. onto the chrome molly tubing. This is the jack point. When you're asking me about weight distribution, um, I really, I really don't know for sure yet. Yeah, I know that. Say. I know that empty. This is uh, pretty close to the to the uh, even point for Jack in the car up with an engine. Because okay, I tried. Yeah, yeah. It. Okay, so with me in it, it'll move it slightly forward from that. Well, let's see. Because most of the engine's in front of the rear axle, right? It's the like... engine is completely in front of the rear axle. Yeah. The battery's in front of the rear axle. And the fuel tank's in front of the rear yeah. axle, and the driver is. The dry sump too. Yeah, all that stuff's in front. So this is. That's a good, that was a good question, and I and I um, and I, I, when I said 35, 65, I, I thought it's a guess, it's yeah. probably, it was just came off the top of my head, but I, I don't think it's actually the case. Let me that wheel. I think it's about it's about a ninety inch wheelbase. In well, the center, the center, center of this hub. We get about 90, 91. Where's 40, 45? 45 is right here. Okay, so this is 50-50. Okay. So that's the center. That's the, that's that would be the center of gravity. And you right. can see that there's a lot of um I must be sitting about ten inches behind it. That's roughly ten percent back. Um 
And the engine is completely in front of the, of the back tires. Yeah, it you is. You still have a lot of parts in front, but it isn't very heavy parts. So um, it's probably going to be about, probably about 60, 40, I'm guessing, somewhere in that range. Well, yeah. uh, until I Does it make it. too much difference, though, if most of the weight's in, in between the axles? No, the polar moment, moment is probably more important than, than the rear weight. Because if you have 60, 40 and uh, have a low polar moment, the, the car will be very maneuverable, but still right. have good traction. Uh, if it's uh, got a big pendulum, like the old 911s had the, had yeah. the engine behind the rear axle. They had a lot of pendulum effects. Right, right. You know, so yeah, uh, that's a wonky setup. If you, well, it was what it was, and it, it, it evolved. Yeah. Uh, but if you uh, if you start a spin, and you if you do start a spin with a lot of pendulum, uh, it's harder to catch it. With right. a shorter wheelbase, uh, lower polar moment. You, if it starts, if it starts when you're on the limit of adhesion, if it starts to get away from you, you can catch it easier. They're, these are well within the realm of race car stuff, you know. Yeah. We built we built some. Um, is that is that kind of one of the trickier things about this chassis with how narrow the wheelbase is? No, not so much. No. No, not so much. It's it, it's. Easy, can't they be a little easier bit easier with this? It's easier. This wheelbase is easier to get than with a longitudinal. When you have the engine turned like a Corvette, mm -hmm. you know where they have the rear engine. It's a mid engine, but it's turned right. this way. It ends up making the whole car longer, bigger, and heavier. See, yeah. When it's a transverse engine, the um, the package becomes uh, more co combined. You also have uh, lower drive frame losses, but you know, mm. on a longitudinal, you got to turn the power ninety degrees. That takes power in a, in the drive frame, the transmission, and uh, a transverse, whether it's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, uh, has lower power losses. Yeah, if you can minimize those, it's yeah, always better too. It's probably five percent anyway. Different between a, a rear a rear drive and a a, a a longitudinal or a transverse. Transverse is probably five percent more efficient. Yeah. So that means on five hundred horsepower, uh, five percent would be five horsepower for every yeah. hundred. That'd be twenty five horsepower yeah, it's, at, it's, at the it's tire. It's not nothing. No, it's twenty five horsepower at the tire, which is pretty substantial. When you think yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> You're too far into it now to get back oh, out. No, no. <laughs> It's not like it's drudgery for me. It's the, right. most, it's the most fun thing I get to work on. That's true. Your own projects are. Yeah, yeah. But it's still, uh, when you have to build everything, it always takes longer. The, like the air intake and the radiator. Well, the air intake and the radiator will be the same as um, straight on the inside. There'll be panels that come mm -hmm. in here. And uh, this section here, on outboard of it, it's still in the grill. I'm going to use for brake cooling or for any other coolers I need to add to the front. But oh, this I radiator, see. this radiator. So you could put like a tube here. Yeah, this will be blocked off. It will actually be sectioned off to the radiator. There will be a blocked off chamber that can receive air and go to the brakes if I need for for racing. But yeah, it's looking good. It's going. I'll start working on it again once it gets cooler. Yeah. In the summer, I don't have much time to work on stuff. But I got, I got a lot done this winter, actually. Because the engine stuff, all the engine bay and the... Um, doing the air filter, the cold air intake for the engine, and yeah. all those things, and plumbing all the lines and stuff in there were, that was quite a bit of work. I did a lot of it with the engine out, and then I stuck the engine back in it. And yeah, then getting, getting the engine wired and running last year was, was a quite a bit of work. Yeah, it's... But that I, getting that one intercooler done on that side was particularly hard because uh, uh, was more challenging because I had to put an air duct for the engine in that duct. This side, right, right, get right. That. This side's going to be simple to do. Just by the. Yeah, uh, and uh, the next, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, I've got all the brakes hardware on. I just have to run the lines and uh, put the two master cylinders. The pedal's done completely, and so I just have to put the two master cylinders and run it. The trunk is there, so like there's yeah, nothing see, nowhere for the air so to go. So there won't be a trunk here. Right. And uh, it'll be open behind it. Uh, the hood may have louvers in it. And also the fenders, because they're wider, are going to be open in the back. Oh, So right we'll have huge air right exit here. off yeah, the back. Yeah, out there. Yeah, and what, I, what I'm going to do is probably take in... Uh, okay. And so the front fender will be about here. So you'll have about a two and a half inch uh, gap at the back of the fender. Right. For, for exit air. And this is going to be streamlined on the inside. So. So is this all going to be kind of open for the air that comes through the radiator yeah, to go through, through out through there? It's going to be able to flow right around the tire. I see, that. yeah. And there will also probably be vent holes in the hood. Right, but okay. My, my buddy who's making the hoods for me is, is can give it, make it for me with vents. 
Yeah, I guess a lot of people who have like K20 swaps are saying that the front gets pretty light on the standard ones because it doesn't have anywhere for the air to go. Well, under. no, the aerodynamics on a standard one. Because it pushes one, it straight down, doesn't it? Well, you want the aerodynamics to push it straight down, but because the air packs under the hood, it makes lift. Uh, okay, so you want you want your air to be Is that what it pull, pushes up on is the hood on the main, a standard one? It pushes up one? on the hood. It actually pushes it, your air pressure, your air pressure coming in, in will will pack into the front of the car and make and make pressure underneath the bonnet. So you right. want it you want it to be able to exit. If I had a K20 engine, I would definitely put holes in the hood. With a, in the hood to get it out yeah, the top. The, yeah, because the stock fenders are closed in here. You can't vent out the fender because right. that's all closed in, but it isn't on this car. The yeah. air is going to flow up. Plus, I'm going to have so much chin spoiler on this, Kurt. Yeah. It's not going to be funny. That's true. You know, It's out in order to do the intercooler stuff. Right. You see. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you got to yeah, know where yeah, you need it's to. All, it's all related to itself. So. It, where the wheel ends is where the intercooler package had, it, had to be close to. Yeah, because you don't want your wheels too far in or too far out. No. The, actually, your wheels, you, you want your body work to be slightly outside of your wheel in the front uh, so that you can get an exit of air as it rushes by. And if you have a little kicker on it, aerodynamically, it'll actually pull more air out. In the back, you want uh, the wheel well to be tucked in flush or a little bit inside the wheel. Hmm. So the wheel well itself will be a little proud of the wheel in the front, probably about three quarters of an inch, close to even across the top, and then probably probably just a little bit and inside. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the same for the front tire too, probably? Same for the front, yeah. The front In the front, the outside edge of the front tire will uh, actually extract a lot of air from the radiator, and then you're gonna be able to uh, get an extraction behind the tire uh, because it'll be open behind the tire too. Yeah, there's a lot of space back behind the tire here, yeah, it looks there is, like. there is. More than more than what they're normally used. I guess you're gonna have a fender out here, but yeah, it's pretty fender, open though with how wide it is. The body, right? the body will be out to here. The body will be out to here, so you're gonna have this much of an opening in here. Yeah, that'll be a lot of space yeah. actually. I'm just gonna, I'll probably um, have a panel of aluminum or something that just smooth has a radius around this corner. Right. And then lines up probably with the inside of the door or close to the inside of the door. You, paint, you do that panel, paint it black, and then it'll, yeah. be, it'll be an opening. Uh, that, those actually help a lot for exiting air onto the front. Yeah, you don't even think you don't think about that stuff too much when you when you look at like a normal stock car because when you're widening it that much, you got a lot of space to work with on the yeah. sides, you yeah. know, for air. Yeah. The um, yeah. do you know one of the most asked questions was it was what does your life insurance policy look like? <laughs> At my age, I don't worry about life insurance policy. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's the same one I have when I'm riding my motorcycle or flying my airplane. That's true, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what the heck? <laughs> the last thought, thing you want to do is die of old age. 